Hey, this is Brittany Griner from the Phoenix Mercury, and you listen to the Three Point Conversion. Front row to your left. Sandy, uh, this game, it just kind of went sideways right from the start, but there were a lot of shots that BG had and some of your other players that weren't bad shots. They just didn't go down. And then it just seemed like it completely got away from you in the second quarter and, and on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, we got our butts kicked tonight, um, yeah, which is disappointing. Um, you know, like I said at the start, they they were really, really aggressive and the hedging went to another level and we still got some open looks and we missed them, you know, and then I think just we just lost momentum and obviously they grew in a lot of confidence and what what they were doing was working and you know it rattled us a little bit to be quite honest and but we got to be better you know so this is one these are one when you're you, you're coaching you're like okay we just flushed that one because we're a better team but you know they when what we showed but you know full credit to Chicago they prepared well and and you know obviously Copper who we talked about was a handful in that first half. Sandy front row to your right. Alex Simon from the next. Obviously, if you guys had Nurse, you feel like it may be a little different. But with the way Copper's playing right now, especially when you maybe want to give her open looks from three and she's making them, just how difficult is it to come up with anything to stop her at this point? Yeah, and you know, a, lot, a lot of it was one-on-one. -on -one. You have to rely on your, your team defense and that. And we allowed her to just to sweep it and go baseline way too much. And yeah, I mean, that's uh, when she gets shooting it from outside. And that's you got to give up something, don't you? Uh, she was making it. She had a really good game, and and you know obviously that took the took the life out a little bit. But look, you know we were we didn't execute well, and you know obviously they partly to blame for how they defended us. Um, you know we just got to go back, watch film, uh, and get ready for the next game. But uh, you know I will say this: it, I, knew, I knew coming in about the officials. I mean we knew that no fouls were going to be called on us. I mean I mean all the fouls on us, and they'll go into the free throw line, and they're going to blow the hold their whistle. Um, and I'm not a coach that stands up here and goes, yeah, the officials and blame and blame. I mean, because, you know, they just need to be a little bit more consistent. I mean, that's how I, that's how I look at it. I mean, they're hard hedging. Some of those, those, some of those running into their fouls and that's contact, isn't it? If you're going to call it down the other end, you need to make sure you, you're being even. This is the finals. I don't think we should get into, um, you know, uh, let's protect the other team because you bitch about the officiating and your free throw attempts, but here we are. Uh, second row to your right. Uh, so Maggie Hendricks from Valley Sports. What what did you say to them in the locker room? Do you? I mean, was there even a conversation? And yeah, sure. I just said we well, got to flush that one. <laughs> That's the conversation because we're a way better team than what we showed tonight. And you know, obviously their crowd got into it and they did what they needed to do. Obviously, this is their home court, but we've played well on home court. We just and we've been in this position before. Uh, we just got to regroup. We got to regroup, refocus, and be better. You know, that's what it comes down to. And that's, you know, that's my job, making sure that we're, you know, we're going to be better because, you know, too many, they took us out of the way too much. And, you know, we didn't have enough scoring options when, you know, BG was missing early. That kind of hurt us, obviously, um, you know, because uh, obviously we rely on our big three a lot for our scoring. Sandy, second row to your left. Hey, Sandy. Um, regarding the officiating, following up on that, uh, how does the league fix this and how long has this been a problem? I mean, th th there've been a lot of coaches who've spoken about this inconsistency that really has gone on the entire season. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's not, you know, I, I'm just, usually I say nothing cause I know it's hard. I know I'm not perfect, you know, um, but uh, you know, it's just, you know, I don't think they're always bad and it's just more getting a little bit more consistency. I don't know. I mean, maybe who knows keeping, refereeing in our our league and playing refereeing more games and not doing college two different rules well, I think that helps that's one of them um you need money for that too so um you know I'm not I'm, I'm not someone to put blame on everyone else <laughs> to be quite honest if I blame anyone it'll be myself that's just how I am but yeah I'm officiating and some are good some days are good some days are not so good but you just it's more about just being consistently good or bad I don't care Sandy, second row to your right. Sandy, now that you have two must-win games ahead of you, how do you dial in on the next game without getting too ahead of yourselves? Well, this is our season. This is what's on the line. And, um, you know, we played in a few uh, eliminations to get here and then a, a game five in Vegas. And we understand, you know, what needs to be done. 
And, and I totally, I believe in this team. You know, we, we weren't very good tonight, but, you know, the other team made us like that, but we still weren't sharp and uh, what we needed to do. And so we'll rise to the occasion. I mean, this is our, la you know, this is it's our knockout. You know, we want to send it back to Phoenix. Let's take it to a game five. Our next question will come from Zoom. Mark Carlisle. Mark, if you would. Sandy, uh, you mentioned, you know, trying to flush this one, put it in the past. You also said, going to look at the tape. What kind of lessons can be learned looking at the tape of this one where so few things went right for you guys? Yeah, I mean, just to see what didn't go right. Sometimes you just have to relive it to piss you off a little bit, to be quite honest. Um, and, and that's all it will be. It's not, I don't think it's X's and O's now. It's just like the attitude that we're going to come out and play in the next game. Um, and you know, just, just like I said, just overall, just taking, just being a little bit more better than what we were. And, uh, you know, this team has great chemistry. I know that they'll respond. Um, but we've got a big challenge ahead of us because, like I said, I have a lot of respect for Chicago, really good team. They're dangerous from so many positions on the floor. Um, but so are we. So we just got to hang in there. Sandy, to your left, toward the back. Well, yeah. Hi, uh, uh, Tarasi and Diggins Smith were three for 19, played 50 minutes. Is there, is there anything about the arena that maybe affected them? The, the noise, the crowd, the, the baskets? No, no, not at all. I think, you know, credit to Chicago, really, their defense. Uh, we're used to playing, we, we've played well on the road. We've won, we're the team that's won the most games on an opponent's floor. Um, you know, we don't mind that atmosphere, but you know, the crowd was great tonight. So it's great. People of Chicago came out and supported this game. So, um, fantastic. And that certainly gave them a lot more energy than it gave us. And, um, we just had a hard, we had a hard time scoring and, and unfortunately offense was, you know, we weren't scoring on offense and it affected our defense. And, you know, we got to dig deeper on defense and hopefully we can get some easy ones on offense. Um, yeah. So, but you know, tough, tough night at the office. Got another game though. Sandy, second row center. Coach Chris Pennant, War Media. It looked like early on you were having success turning Chicago over, but uh, could you talk about uh, what they were doing against Brittany? It looked like they were playing more single coverage rather than doubling, and was she having a tougher time getting looks in the first half? Yeah, I mean, we got her some good looks. You know, I think we got her some good looks. She just missed them. Um, they played in her space a little bit more. I think she... I think in the second half you saw her, she went to the right hook. That's that's a pretty nice little shot there too. So I think that's what she, when she realized that and, you know, they couldn't take away her space a little bit and that, you know, she still finished what, seven from 17, but uh, she was about one from eight when she's struggling. It's like, oh, this is, we're not getting, it was like, I think it's like 20 to points in the paint to two. <laughs> yeah, that's hard when you can't just um, win from shooting outside. Um, but she, like I said, BG, you know, missed some. She made some in the second half, and and you know, she's still someone we need to get the ball to as much as possible. Uh, just a couple more questions, Sandy, uh, to the right, standing. Coach, uh, you you made a comment regarding the the fans here uh, at Wintrust packed house tonight. Obviously, the sky does not want to go back to Phoenix. Uh, if it's a tight game going down the stretch on Sunday, uh, how do you offset that? regarding, well, in football, they call it the 12th man. Uh, but here in Chicago, it's a basketball town. How do you prepare for the crowd aside from playing against the, the, the team itself? Yeah, we just played a game five in Vegas with that 10,000 fans. So we've been in that situation before. Um, you know, and, and it really just comes, like I said, we have a veteran team too, led by Diana. It's just playing with a little bit more poise and execution when it matters. You know, and that's the key thing and making plays when it matters. And we didn't make too many of them tonight, but I know that we're capable of it. Uh, turning to Zoom, Danny Thompson. Danny, go ahead, please. Coach Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion. When Copper is going at the way she's going and when Candace Parker is playing at the top of the key, does it make you want to change your defensive principles? I know you, you've kept breezy out there all season guarding the best defender but does it change when copper is being aggressive and parker standing at the, at the top of the key just playmaking from that part of the floor oh yeah i mean like they're, they're all pretty dangerous tonight but like you know copper she was just a handful they're isolating whoever she was guarding 
um, like I said, we, had a, we can't just rely on one-on-one -on -one coverage. You know, we wanted to push it back to congestion. So we didn't really execute what we wanted to do there. But, you know, Copper made a lot of great plays. And I thought Candice was really, really good too. Just her aggressiveness on defense, but, you know, ability to, to score as well. I mean, it was face to basket and, you know, back to the basket. And we had, you know, BG was on her at times too. So, you know, this is a team that can spread you. That's, that's always, that's always tough when they can spread you. And, um, but like I said, we've, we've beaten them once we have to just to regroup, refocus and get ready to beat them again. What day is it today? Don't even know. Friday, Sunday. Sandy, thank you to our media. Stay with us. We'll be joined in just a moment by coach James Wade. I'll go first. James, go for a second. James, front row to your right. Annie Castle from the Sun Times. James, what are you most impressed with from your team tonight? They, you know, held Phoenix to the worst field goal percentage in a WNBA final game, but also everybody was involved offensively. So, um, what are you most impressed with? Uh, defensive activity was uh, really good. Um, I thought that we were very active and we were connected. Um, you saw a lot of um, covering for each other, a lot of communication, and so. Um, I think it created easy opportunities for us. We were able to turn them over and uh, score out of those turnovers, and I, I was I was pretty proud of that. James, second row to your left. Hey, Coach. Uh, what can you just say about this crowd tonight? Um, th I think this might have been the most packed we've seen Wintrust Arena since you became head coach here. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, uh, it was it was a sight to see. Uh, I appreciated the energy and like. Um, you know, I really feel Chicago. I really feel it. And, um, you know, the way they came out and they support, you can feel the passion that they have. And it just um, gives us more, it gives us more passion. And so uh, hopefully we can see the same thing Sunday and um, we can all celebrate together. Uh, James, in the uh, last row center. James, Khalil is a player who was averaging six or seven points only a few years ago. She's had a star turn in these playoffs. What have you seen from her uh, in general after such a great performance tonight? Uh, so, you know, we we have a great coaching staff and they they work with the players every day. And so it's a 50 50. Um, you have players that that work, but you have players like Ka that that really put in the work and you see it right away. And so the players have to be willing to put the time in. Uh, and the coaches, they're going to put time in. And so this is what you have, a product of this, uh, when you have somebody as talented as she is with a motor and a skill set. Um, that and, and the one thing that probably doesn't get talked about as much, her competitiveness, uh, that's what it takes to get to the next level. Uh, and we used to see it every day, even when she wasn't playing as much. Uh, so it's no surprise to us um, because we know what we have. Uh, in her and um, this is just uh, now she's letting the world know and um, it's, it's you know it's, it's just who she is right, we have three more questions from the room and then we'll turn to the zoom third row to your left James uh, coach in the middle of the second quarter there you had that 10-0 run to sort of break things open just what what did you see from your team during that stretch uh, I, I saw our pace pick up and um, when we're playing at that type of pace we're really hard to guard uh, so, you know, we just have to continue to play at that pace, continue to move the ball and, and to continue to attack closeouts when we have an opportunity. James, Cheryl Ray Stout from WBEZ Radio. Hey, Cheryl. Hi. What does it mean in a game like this, you were able to rest your starters at the end of the game when you have a closeout game on Sunday? Uh, yeah, it was important. Um, I was going back and forth with, with my staff and, uh, because the game is in less than 48 hours. And so this is a dream come true. If you can get, you know, the, the starters rest and knowing they'll have their legs, uh, no excuses to not have their legs, um, on Sunday. And so we were, we were pretty happy about that. Uh, so I thought about it. I was like, okay, should I, you know, go back to them at some point? Um, uh, but we, we all discussed that, you know, if, I had four timeouts. So if they go on a run or if we see that we're a little winded, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll call a couple of timeouts. And, but um, our, our bench, um, the, I call one timeout to compose us a little bit. And then 
um, our bench kind of went to work and got back to the rhythm. It, it, not only was it good um, for our starters, but for our bench to actually uh, separate a little bit. And because these games are really, you don't want to have momentum going into Sunday. And so what our bench was able to do was really important because they didn't allow them to get momentum. Um, and, and so I, I really appreciated that. Uh, our bench was really important today. James, to your left, second row. Hey, James, Jackie Powell, Bleacher Report. Um, so folks call Candace the quarterback of the defense. I'm curious if you can apply that extended metaphor to Ka and sort of, you know, how important defensively she is for this team. You, you want me to use football terms? Yeah, completely extended know. metaphor. Why not? Okay, she's um, quarterback of the defense. Wow, I never heard that. That's, but that's offense. Like, Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so Kaz like the wide receiver of the defense, I guess. Yes, I, I have no idea. I, that kind of threw me for a loop. So yeah, she's the wide receiver of our defense, but an elite one. Like, um, what's the guy? Sorry, I'm not naming a Bears player, but may, maybe like Hopkins or something. I guess. Yeah, yeah, she's like that. Second row to your right, James. Hi, James. Maggie Hendricks, Valley Sports. Yes, I do have cookies. Yeah. Um, my question, though, is how how do you keep them? How, what were you talking about in the locker room to keep them from getting too high or to whatever going into a, a clinching game? Um, I just talk about, you know, I point out what we did successfully as a unit. Um, I, I talk about individual performances and I know they're going to they're a prideful team. They have, you know, three trophies and I know they're going to come out and punch but we're going to punch too. So I just, um, just told them we have to be aggressive and we've, you know, we've had the same, um, you know, saying for, for the entire playoffs and we're going to stay with that. Um, we know what game uh, four means for us, but you know, it's for us, it's about winning the game and winning it in a fashion where we're aggressive and we have to play as, as, as desperate and connected as they will or even more. All right, we're going to, I'm sorry, uh, James, front row to your left. Hey, Coach Wake, uh, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Uh, you're a game away from winning a WNBA, possibly winning a WNBA championship. One of the few black coaches that are in that position. Have you thought about that? And if so, what does that mean to you just to be in the position to, to continue to carry on that legacy? I, I think, you know, I, I think about it. And you know, like like I do, it's this is something we can't escape. And so we live in the skin and we have to, uh, we have to represent uh, because we, the world's a little bit unfair to us in the way we're represented and the way we're looked at and the chances that we don't get. And so um, you always have to protect yourself at all times. Um, you get proud of these moments, uh, but sometimes I have to act like, I have to act like that I'm supposed to be here. If, even though life has told me that I'm not. And so um, it means a lot. It means a lot. It means a lot that my son is here and he gets to see his daddy uh, uh, coaching in front of a lot of fans just cheering and um, and he gets to see success. So maybe in 15 years, it won't be a big deal for him. So um, I'm glad you asked that question. So yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, we're going to turn to Zoom, and we'd like to get questions in from a few folks who haven't had an opportunity yet. We're going to get, begin with Cheryl, and you're going to be followed by Allison. Cheryl, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Cheryl Coward, HoopFeed.com. Uh, my question is related to a little bit about what you've just said about uh, what does it mean to have your family here all the way from France during this crucial stretch, and your son's wearing a Courtney Vandersloot jersey. Is that his favorite player? Uh, he... <laughs> Well, I mean, he likes all of them. He has a couple of jerseys. Um, it depends on the weather. He's a, you can ask him today. It'll be Courtney Van Sloot. Uh, tomorrow it'll be Ka. And um, he has a special place in his heart for Candace though. And that that's a forever constant. And so Candace is the one that he's known since he was a baby. And um, so he's really close to her. Uh, I think if you, you know, more often than not, it'll probably be Candace than anyone. Next question will come from Allison. Allison, you will be followed by Edwin. Edwin, you will have the last question before we move to players. Allison, go ahead. 
Hi, James, Allison, Marin from the next at the nine. Congratulations. Thank you. The, um, the differential between the two teams, how surprising was it to you that, uh, uh, that uh, you won by so many? And what is the impact of that going to be for game four? I don't focus on um, what we won by, it's just how we played. So that's, you know, I don't think the scores really indicate a lot of things. Uh, sometimes you can lose some close games and you play great. Uh, so for us, it's about the how. And we know we have to stay focused and, and focus and concentrate. Uh, I want them to feel good about tonight's uh, win, but after tonight, we have to really hone in on on um, the next game. Like we have to hone in on the next game. Uh, it gives us collective confidence, I'm sure. So you can't get around that, but um, we really have to come and take care of business. So tomorrow we'll we'll get back in the gym and and we'll figure out some things that we didn't do great, and um, we'll try to figure out how they're going to attack us and and. Um, We'll, we'll clean it up and hopefully we'll come out and, and give a, a great effort on, on Sunday. Our last Thank question you. will come from Edwin. Edwin, go ahead. Uh, Coach Wade, congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Uh, the team was dominant, obviously. The, the score reflects that and the, the individual stats reflect that. 44% from three won the rebounding battle and only had, to me, the most impressive stat, 13 turnovers, which usually is, is uh, very high for this guy. Um, when you're looking at what the team needs to do to win on Sunday, what's the number one aspect you think will help them win? I mean, you, you pointed out some key facts. I, you know, I, I think we only had maybe four turnovers in the second half. And so that helped us out a lot. Uh, the fact that we were able to take care of the ball and and continue to be aggressive and had spacing, we had good spacing on the floor, which helped that out. Um, I think that's something we have to continue to build on. Uh, not sending them to the free throw line, us winning the free throw battle today helped us in our aggressiveness toward the basket helped us as well. So uh, I just think we have to stay there uh, as far as not fouling them and then taking care of the ball. Uh, if we can get to a point where we're around taking around the same amount of shots, uh, because we're not taking the uh, turn over the ball, then I think it helps us. James, thank you. All right, thanks, guys. To our media, stay with us. Our Phoenix players are next. We will have Skylar Diggins Smith, Bria Hartley, and Diana Tarasic. Skylar, Diana, Bria, thank you. We're going to begin right away with questions. Center, second row. Diana, Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Um, on a night like this, not just you shooting, but the entire team kind of struggling from the field. Is this one of those nights where you like the looks and it just didn't go down, or was it something they were doing uh, specifically defensively? Yeah, I, I think we can uh, take the easy way out and say that, or we can really look at the mirror at, at ourselves and uh, make sure we come uh, with a little bit more intent uh, in the next game. But, you know, it would have been nice to make a couple shots here and there as a group. You know, that's uh, – it is the game of basketball. It is about putting the ball in the hole. And uh, today we just didn't do that at a very efficient clip. Uh, and uh, I think there was obviously different um, circumstances that – that's why that happened. In the, in the center, first row. Yeah, Michelle Vopel, ESPN.com. Um, Diana, you you guys, you've been in this position before, sort of where you, you, you have to come back from, from a tough game. What is it, Sandy talked about just sort of flushing this game, but how, how do you respond uh, emotionally and how do you, you know, what do you tell your teammates? After yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's just one loss. You know, you lose by 40, you lose by one, it's one game. Um, but there has to be a sense of urgency, obviously, in the next game of playing with uh, more intent. And uh, today we didn't do that. To your right in the front row. Alex Simon from the next. Skyler, right now, what is making Kalia Copper such a difficult matchup for you guys on the defensive end? Yeah, I mean, she's been a hard matchup for everybody this year. I mean, she's improved. Um, she's great at, uh, she likes the baseline drive. She has a quick first step. 
Um, I think she's improved her three point shot um, this year. It makes you have to, you know, put a hand up on that as well. So I think they do a good job of putting her in positions to ISO. And, um, you know, when she's going downhill, she's a good finisher at the rim. And the second row to your left. Diana, you said the, sorry. What's up? Chris Pennant, World Media. You said the circumstances were different tonight. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you got to give credit where credit is due. Um, you know, Chicago came out, played aggressive. We knew they were going to. You know, they flood the ball hard on, on, on balls, and we just didn't do a good job of handling it and getting out of it. Um, you know, when you get to this point in a series, all the teams know each other. You all know each other's plays, and it's just um, as a unit and as a group, can you buckle down and – and do that really well. And, and today we just didn't do that. And uh, uh, it's a, that's disappointing. But at the same time, um, you know, this team has been resilient all year when, you know, faced with uh, challenges. So, you know, we're excited to, to get game four going. We're going to move to Zoom. We're going to go with Mark Carlisle and then Walt. Mark, then Walt. Mark, go ahead. Um, I'll give this one to Skyler. Uh, just last week, you guys had a fairly lopsided loss in game four, came back to win game five against Vegas. Does that experience give you, you know, the confidence to know that you just did this quick turnaround where you can flip the script and win the next game? Yeah, I think D said it, you know, all year we face adversity and, um, you know, we have, a, we have a veteran group um, and uh, we'll go back and look at it and see what changes we can make. But I mean, we don't have a choice. We got it. We got to win. We have to win from here on out. And so, and we understand that it's going to be a lot of digest tomorrow. We'll go back, look at the film, see where we can make changes. And um, so that's it. You know, that's, that's what we're going to do. So we're a mature group. You know, we're going to come out with a different mindset next game. And we, we, we're we desperate. We got to win. All right. From Zoom also, Walt, please. Hi, Walt Silva from Bermud Deportivo. Good night, everyone. And I'm asking for speaking Spanish to, to Diana Sorassi. Uh, Diana. Eh, el juego, bueno, las, las, eh, el equipo de Chicago Sky las sacó de la cancha, eh, incluso se, se, se vio en un momento que tu cara demostraba que no había forma o que parecía que no había forma de, de, de ganarles este partido porque les salió todo. Ahora, siendo una de las voces de la, de la experiencia y de las referentes del equipo, ¿dónde se pone la cabeza para el próximo partido? Y bueno, esta noche no jugamos el partido que queríamos jugar, no teníamos las cosas hechas bien de, de, del primer cuarto. Entonces las, las cosas se pusieron difícil como dije antes. Uh, Chicago jugó un partido muy bueno, muy agresivo. Uh, y también como dije, ganar por 40 o perder por uno es un partido. Y todavía tenemos viva, vida para el partido número 4 que va a estar acá. Y se tiene que ganar, se tiene que venir con una diferente... Uh, un diferente carácter para, para ganar el partido y para jugar con diferente, diferente fuerza que jugamos hoy. Entonces, um, vamos a estar preparados y vamos a jugar un mejor partido en el próximo y eso ya lo sabemos. Gracias. Y nada. Front row to your left. <clears throat> For um, Skylar and Diana, can you become focused too much on trying to get the ball into Brittany sometimes? And the, the offense isn't diverse enough when you when that happens. Yeah, I mean it's always it's always a game of balance, right? Um, we always know BG's uh, the mismatch for any team. Um, I mean that's clear. Um, and there has to be you know a healthy balance of obviously getting BG involved early and often, uh, and then also being able to stay aggressive on the perimeter and making sure uh, to keep the defense honest. But um, today, honestly, nothing worked. <laughs> <laughs> inside, outside. I mean, they really just took us out of everything we wanted to run. Um, and uh, I think that was probably the key to the game. Uh, first row to your right. Alex from the next again. Bria, it seems like at times this season when you guys weren't making your three-pointers, they were open looks that just weren't falling. But it, at least from my point of view, it looks like Chicago is maybe making those shots more difficult. Is that kind of something that you guys feel like those threes maybe aren't falling because they're tighter spaces in that way? Um, maybe sometimes. Maybe sometimes they're fighting against the shot clock at the end in their rush. But um, I think sometimes we actually get we're, we're not knocking them down. So um, this comes to us like stepping up and, and hitting shots. And I mean, we shot 25% from three. So you don't want to shoot that bad. So. bad. <laughs> All right, returning to Zoom, Stephen Garner. Stephen, go ahead. 
Stephen Gardner from Nuts and Bolts Sports. Question for Skylar Diggins Smith. So after a game like tonight, do you guys typically go back and watch film and regroup, or do you focus more on yourselves? And also, what would be a point of emphasis for you guys going into game four? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, like we said <clears throat> earlier, you know, we got to go and see what it looked like and see what changes we can make. And obviously, with a quick turnaround, um, you know, that's that's how we got to do it. We got to look at a lot of film and see see what it where we can make the adjustments. <clears throat> But you charge it to the game, a game like this. I mean, you charge it to the game. Like D said, it's one game. Um, it was ugly as hell. Um, they were the aggressors. Give them all the credit and 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 let's play on Sunday. I mean, that's all we could really do. Um, we can't get get too high about it. This is we didn't lose the series tonight, so we got another opportunity. And that's that's what these this team um, historically um, that's where we thrive when we're we're having the opportunity to to get it out the mud. Our backs against the road. I mean, backs against the wall, playing on the road, you know, we, we got to bring it. This is what you want. This is why we play the game. We play it on the floor. So charge it to the game tonight. They kicked our ass, and now we got to come back and respond. That's that's all I got to say. Last question from Zoom. Rafiq, go ahead, please. This is Rafiq with Nothing But That Sports Talk. I got a question for Diane Taurasi. The team scored a total of 50 points in the, in the loss. Like 50? Can we expect a much better – Office well, I hope so. We can't be any worse than 50, buddy. <laughs> Thank 50 you. pretty bad, Rafi. Thank you, guys. We'll be better. We'll be better than 50. Appreciate your insight. Good luck. Go to, go to Vegas with that one. <laughs> we'll be better than 50. 50. Oh, we'll be better than 50. Take that to Vegas. What you, where you want to go? Tennessee. Tennessee. Ali Candace Diamond, thank you. First question will come from the front row to your right. Hey guys, this question's for Candace. Um, hey. Um, uh, Kalia talked about one aspect of her game she wanted to improve on was her three-point shooting. And I know you guys shoot together. So what have you seen from her that was like a commitment to, to getting better there? And, and how have you seen her grow that, that aspect of her game? Yeah, I think, um, well, you know, the person to my right, uh, one of the best shooters in the entire world. So seeing her in the gym, you know, I think it's inspired us. We have a little shooting group, me, Diamond, Z and Ka, you know, because Sloot, Sloot and Allie are selfish at the other end and they don't like us shooting down there with them. So we've kind of developed our own little shooting group and um, we just get up extra shots. And I think it's about commitment and it's about putting in the time. And when you see somebody like the person to my right, who is the best at her craft, consistently getting in the gym, I think it inspires us. Second row to your left. Uh, Candace, this team held, um, I mean, the Mercury set a WNBA record for lowest uh, field goal percentage in WNBA finals game tonight. Um, what did you see from the defense? Were you able to stop it, um, a Mercury team that scored 91 points last game? You know, they're a great team, but I think we came in with a defensive effort um, tonight, just trying to make things difficult, um, make sure that we're contesting shots. And I think our team did a good job of, you know, rotating and helping each other. Listen, we're not, we're not going to, you know, do that every night in terms of they're a great team. So they're going to come out on Sunday. Um, but really our job is just to try to make it as hard as possible, honestly, and live with the results if we're contesting shots and making it difficult. Uh, back to back questions from your, the third row to your left. Uh, continue on the defensive team, uh, coach talked about the communication and, and help tonight. Is that uh, easier when you're at home to sort of, you know, get that communication and, and defensive effort? Um, not necessarily. I mean, Winchester was really loud. Um, you know, it was really loud. We had a sellout crowd. They were involved. Um, so, you know, I can't really say that it's easier. I think that the thing that helped was our preparation. Um, we had really good prep, um, past 
day or so and coming into tonight. And so I think we were all just locked in. Uh, third row center. Um, for Allie and Diamond, um, just on Kalia's evolution, did you notice any differences in her going into the bubble season? Honestly, I think that she uh, had just years of overseas experience, um, just getting better every single year. And she was just patient waiting for her opportunity. And I think she knew going into the bubble that she was going to have that opportunity. And um, she just took advantage of it. She was ready. And I think that the main thing was she was ready and she was prepared for it. Uh, second row to your right. Diamond, this is one of the best games we've seen you have this season. Has anything, did anything feel different about tonight? It's the finals. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's the finals. You know, I don't, I don't think anybody wants to come out and play bad in the finals or do something that could negatively impact the team. And I've, you know, I've had my fair share of ups and downs this season. Um, but you know, I, I prepared. Uh, my teammates pick me up uh, each and every day, and. Um, you know, I just, uh, I felt good coming into tonight that I was going to just focus on my defense and my effort and uh, whatever else happened is just like extra. Front row to your left. Congratulations, ladies, on the win. This question is for Candice. Um, you're on the verge of a part of this team as far as being uh, winning a WNBA championship with two different franchises. So what does that mean to you? And secondly, having James Wade as a head coach, being one of the few black head coaches that are on the verge of also winning a WNBA championship, what does that mean to you as well? You know, on the, on the verge, um, obviously finishing this game feels good. You know, this is right where we want to be is um, to have an opportunity. Um, I want us to enjoy this game today. And then on Saturday, we got to refocus because they're a great team. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is not getting ahead of ourselves. So um, I would like to delay that response. Uh, and secondly, I think it just says a lot about our league. Um, just in terms of, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from or what you look like or all of that, you know, you're capable of having an opportunity to lead a, lead a team. And so I think that that's, um, that speaks volumes of, of where we're at and to do it in Chicago. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, the city has embraced obviously people that have come from here, but also I think James Wade has, is sincerely embraced, uh, Slutsa you know, developed Chicago in as well. So I think the city really embraces that. And I think that'll be huge for James. Front row to your left. Yeah. Uh, Candace Michelle Vogel from ESPN.com. You, you, you talked last week when you guys won the game four against Connecticut game fours haven't always been good to you in, in the finals, having been in this, this exact position before when you were with LA, how do you sort of take that? Like, do you, do you sort of ruminate a little bit on that or, or not? And also, could you comment on something James said, which he said, a game like this is kind of a dream come true to be able to rest people a little bit before the, the next game. Yeah, game four. Um, I think it's, it's, it's crucial for us to continue to have the same mentality that we had coming into this game and even greater because it's going to be really hard. And if we think it's going to be easy, that's a lie. Like, they're great players on the other end. And, you know, just as you said, we got to rest, so, so did they. So we have to come out with um, a defensive mentality and try to make things as difficult as possible and, um, you know, play our game. We can't be hesitant. We, we have to go out there and, and, and play deliberate, you know, both on the offensive end and defensively. I'm sorry, for a second, Leroy, to your left. Hey, Candace, Jackie Powell, Bleacher Report. We've spoken a ton about Kalia's ability as a scorer, but I'm curious if you can explain her value defensively and, and how she's contributed uh, to turning the sky around defensively after years of, of this team struggling on that end of the floor. I think it's huge for her to have the games that she's had and then also be, be tasked with uh, defending Diana and... Um, 
you know, I think sometimes, you know, those contributions on that end of the court get overlooked. And I think, you know, we depend on her athleticism as we depend on Diamond's athleticism. And, you know, me and Allie are um, not over the hill yet, but we got to use more of our IQ a little bit. So I think we have a great mixture where she's able to go out and defend and then everybody behind is just reacting. So we try to have a solid team defense and, you know, her and Diamond are the ones that really bring that athleticism and being able to stay in place so we can use our uh, IQ. <laughs> Questions from the third row. Ladies, what was it like on the court today? Because we kept hearing about what it was going to be like having a sold out crowd, but what was it like to actually get that energy from the Winfrest Arena crowd? Um, it was pretty surreal, you know, to even just down the stretch into the fourth quarter, like the crowd was just so engaged. Um, I've never been in Winchest uh, with with that type of energy and um, that amount of people. Um, so I can definitely say it was a first for me. And I'm sure, obviously, Allie, Candace just got here. Um,